Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the build you've all been waiting for, well, sort of. Where'd I get this? What a mess. Okay, the build you've all been waiting for, or not, I have a 272. It's literally a box of parts. These are the old bearings, pulled those out. Um, you've seen me pull bearings about, uh, stuff out before. I can't show you how <laughs> this comes apart because it was already a part when I got it. Um, it's basically a box of parts. So what I can show you is that we gotta clean this up and then we can put it back together. So uh, Husqvarna 272 XP. Um, two, I mean, I, I guess I would assume that's 1992. So it's an oldie. Um, never done one before. I've done the 262 and um, I have a 181 here actually, which I'm gonna be doing a build on pretty soon. Here's the uh, the 272. We're going to build this on up from scratch, from nothing, and see if uh, we can't get it to, to pop. So, um, first thing first is I'm going to get all this cleaned up. I'm going to get this down to bare metal, and I'm actually going to clean up inside uh, where the bearings are here first, and I'm just going to do that with a wire wheel. So I've got a wire wheel here in my Dremel. And I'm going to do that here too. Now, the PTO side is a little bit tricky because the bearing can go all the way in and out. The, um, so this has got to be nice and clean, and we have to position the bearing according to where the oiler stops it. Now, if you do that hot, you can mess up the oiler, but we can do this cold and not mess up the oiler, and I'm, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to get some cleaning done, and uh, then I'll be back. Just going to go in here and clean this up, getting debris out of here, that way the bearings go in nice and smooth. And you really gotta shine up the surface here so where the seals go, that way the seals you know, go in nice and good there too. And you don't want to do this after the bearings are in here, because then you get debris in the bearings. So nice and shiny is good. A little bit of pitting inside there, so I can throw a little bit of sealant on there before I put the uh, put the seal in there. And you're going to want to use anaerobic. That's nice and pretty. No debris in there, so the bearing will slide in nice and smooth. Clean this up good. A lot of crustaceans on here. I don't know what this stuff is, but you definitely don't want it in the crankcase. Now this part on this side is not necessarily a sealing surface, but right here is, there's an O-ring that goes here. So nice, smooth, and clean. So a little bit more work to do, but you get the idea. I'm also going to shine up this surface here with a, uh, with a, a bigger wire wheel, and then we'll get ready to put it together. Here we've got the cases. I got these down to bare metal. This is all, all these surfaces have brake cleaner on them, so they're nice and clean and degreased. So these are uh, 6202s. They're the same bearings that are used in the Husky 372 and a lot of the other saws. And what I like about this so far is that it uses the same bearings on each side and the same seals on each side, albeit the PTO side's a little weird, but we'll get to that. So, the thing with these bearings is I buy these in like a 10 pack they come with shields on them really no need for the shield so just remove the shield just like that now these are quite pricey from the dealer yet you can get these for less than five bucks a piece. These are Natchez, you know, these are Japanese bearings, nice stuff. You can get these for less than five bucks a piece, especially if you get them in a 10 pack. So there's really no sense, I, I just don't think there's any sense in buying OEMs. So yeah, that's perfect, okay. I just, for this, you just don't need an OEM bearing, which is certainly, I think, a, uh, an appeal for why a saw like this makes sense. If you can avoid buying OEM bearings, great. Especially if they're, I hate proprietary. So, 
a little bit of, this is just anti-seize, this will help it slip in easier. So you can put the bearing in a couple of ways. You can, you can heat this up and drop it in, or you can do it cold. So for those guys that don't have a torch or don't feel like using a torch, let's see if we can do this cold for you. Now the trick with cold is you've got to get this lined up just right. So if you need to tap it, you don't want to tap the inner race, but if you need to tap it just a bit to make sure it's straight, you're good. So there's your setup. Just some washers, um, some half inch threaded rod, nothing crazy. A couple of wrenches. And it down. Not quite right, maybe. Back it off. Adjust if you need to. This is not about speed. This is just about doing it with tools that you have on hand. Say, okay, you know, it needs to go. And once it gets lined up, once it's really lined up, it should go pretty smooth. Again, you know, I have a torch here. I could have been done. But, don't need a torch. It's going in perfect. That's it. Stopped. It's done. Reverse. Now your bearing's in. Perfect. Now let's go to the PTO side. This would be a little bit trickier. So one thing I try to do is I try not to lose these screws. So I put them where they should be. Okay, so all we got to do here is put the oiler in temporarily because that will help position the bearing. So let's put the oiler in. One, two, three screws. So this goes in pretty snug. Now we have a positive stop for the bearing. Again, we're going to get our anti-seize out here. If you're doing this hot, you just drop it in. But I like doing it this way. New Japanese bearing. Tap the outer race to align it visually. Take a jig going here. Get your wrenches. Turn it on down. Yeah, that's going nice.
just stops. That's it. Done. Back it off. Bearings in. Beautiful. I'm actually going to take the oiler out now, and we're going to get the case halves together, and then I can put the oiler back on. So now we have good access to that bearing, we have access to that bearing. Let's get the crank and we'll pull the crank on through. Now if this is all good and proper, this should not slide in. It should have to be pressed in. Which is fine, because we got the tools for that. I think this is M10 by 1 left hand thread. I'll leave my email address in case you want to, to contact me for a set of these tools. So, threaded rod, sleeve, rod. washer and nut, the handle leaves your left hand free, just crank it on down. And on these huskies you basically go until it stops. That's it. That's all you need. You won't really, until you've done a bunch of these, you don't really value having your left hand free, but man, it does help to keep that crank in position. Just take the whole thing apart. Now your crank is properly installed in the bearing which is crucial. So I'm going to put some 1184 on here and some 1184 on there and the gasket and we'll get the whole thing together. So I happen to have a Genuine Husky gasket set here and what I'm going to do first is actually take the flywheel side here and goop this up with some 1184 Now over here it doesn't really seal, so we don't really have to worry about it quite as much, but... You just want to have enough to get rid of the sheen on the metal. Thin, even coating. Now I do the flywheel side first, um, because I want this to tack up while I'm doing this side. The longest spans are here and here, so you do want to be cognizant of that. So while that's tacking up, now I'll add the goop to this side. Some guys don't use goop. You can just use the, the regular gasket if you like. This is extra insurance, Walt's method, so I've been using it, works good. Alright, so now this is tacked up ever so slightly. Positioning pins here are key. Very important. Make sure all your holes line up pretty good. And they do. Tacked, clean, ready to go. Now, we're going to move this here. Now I'm going to get the PTO side for this. M10 by 1 here. You can use the large sleeve or probably the small sleeve for this, doesn't really matter. Get your handle going. Crank it on down. 
I'm going to use a wrench for this, but you can use a ratchet, whatever you like. The positioning pins have got to line up. And good. And reverse. There we go. Amazingly, I do have the dog. These are 60 millimeter case bolts. One. Two. Yeah, it certainly feels. They go. Good. Now we can hand tighten them. Always double check. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, case bolts are in, now on to the seals. Pretty much the same as any other seal I've done. Take your seal, make sure there is a ring inside of it, spring. Coke can trick. I've described this in other videos, just a piece of Coke can. anaerobic sealer. Now, if you want to be picky about things, hit this with some brake cleaner. A little bit of grease right on the Coke can and you'll get it. Slide it on down. Now all you need to do is drive that home with a deep socket. Got to be driven straight. Now, I don't know exactly how deep to put this one. Might be in the manual somewhere. But it's mostly in now, which means I can remove the Coke can. Yeah. Now I'm not going to invert it. That looks driven deep enough on this side. And there you have it.
driven home. There's your seal. Let's do this side. Brake cleaner, especially in these parts here. That's where the rubber bits are going to go. A little bit of blue Loctite. Down those holes. Happen to have a new rubber dip hose here. Wire screen's okay. Yeah, I, I am going to goop this up just because that's what I do. That's going to tack up and get to our oiler here. And I got to get this seal out of here somehow. See, there's a, there's a rubber o ring on the outside here. I don't have a replacement for that. It looks fine. I'm going to make sure there's some sealant around it. And the same thing here this rubber o ring is going to get uh, some sealant around it. How about a big socket? Center it. Is it flush? It's basically flush. Get a deep socket and hit it. Son of a gun. Okay. That works. Anaerobic sealer. I think I can tap it in from that direction. But it's going to have to be tapped flat adjust the alignment here. Oh. Yeah, that's gone. Good. New seal is in. Oil dip tube goes in, now that this is tacked up a little bit. Tilt it a little forward to get it to go. Then back down. Dip tube is in. Coops and sealants are ready to go. Got our Loctite, coops and sealants. Now, a little bit of grease here. Oh, wait a minute. The big one we forgot was this o ring. Last but not least is this o ring. Coke can trick in the middle. It's this lip here on the crankshaft you gotta get over. That's what you need the Coke can trick for. Alright, goops and sealants, Loctite, sealant, grease, Coke can goes over the lip, goes over the lip, and then very gently you work this down. One, 
to three. Two, three. Pull your Coke can out. And now you know the thing with the Coke can is, I mean, you have to be assured that that spring doesn't pop out. If this rubber inverts and the spring pops out, you're sunk, you're going to have a vacuum leak, um, and you won't know it. You won't know it until you either test for the vacuum leak or you go to run it and you're like, oh crap, I have an air leak. Well, sure enough, those springs pop out. Not good, so you got to use the Coke can. My opinion, there you have that. Notice this bushing was missing. It's from a 394, I wonder if it fits. Yeah, that fits. Close enough. Kind of a rashed up case, but you know what? This is going to be a fine saw. It's going to be a fine saw when it gets back together. That's the uh, the bottom end there. Nice and smooth. That's going to work just fine. Get a razor blade. Take off these tabs. One. Two. That makes it nice and easy. And we'll continue on with the build. I don't know exactly where to go from here, but we'll get this figured. Stay tuned.